Hey guys, this is Cesar with Nursing School Made Easy. Today's lecture is going to be on pneumothorax. As always, these lectures are geared towards preparing you for the NCLEX exam. So, <clears throat> again, there's a lot of information on pneumothorax, so I'm going to try to make this very, very brief and very, very basic and hit you with the main points that you need to remember for the NCLEX exam. So, first of all, let's get into some uh, basic AMP. Let's talk about the lungs, okay? So we have the thorax, chest. Now in the thorax, chest region, you're gonna have your ribs. And inside that thoracic cavity, you're gonna have lungs. So remember that in your chest, you're gonna have lining here in your thoracic cavity and then also you're gonna have some a different lining in your lungs okay so we'll say this is the right lung and this is the left lung okay so you have a space here we'll call this the plural space so you must understand what this plural space is so when you're <clears throat> breathe in the lung is going to expand and again there's a space here and you have uh, some fluid in here that fluid kind of helps lubricate this side of the lung with your thoracic cavity here so it just kind of slides in okay provide some lubrication well in a pneumothorax you have air in the plural space so you have air accumulation here now the air accumulation is going to cause pressure on the lung and that increase in pressure is going to cause the lung to collapse so we'll just say we have a huge amount of air so here where I'm coloring will be air and again this increase in pressure is going to cause the lung to collapse so that's essentially what a pneumothorax is again a pneumothorax is air in the plural space which leads to collapse of the lung okay now that is just our very very basic definition now there are different types of pneumothorax so let's jump into those right away Number one, you can have something like a closed pneumothorax. Okay, an example of this um, may be something like a spontaneous pneumothorax. Now, a spontaneous pneumothorax can happen to several different patients. Maybe patients that suffer from asthma, from emphysema from COPD or maybe patients that are smokers now this can also happen in very very athletic patients <laughs> patients that take very very deep breaths in okay <clears throat> you have deep breaths in or very very forceful inspirations that may cause um, this to kind of collapse that increased pressure may cause this to collapse okay so again spontaneous pneumothorax can occur in patients with asthma emphysema COPD or those patients who smoke smokers are at greater risk for spontaneous pneumothorax another example of a closed pneumothorax is Closed pneumothorax, excuse me, could be uh, broken or fractured ribs. Okay, maybe the patient was involved in some MVA, mortal, excuse me, motor vehicle accident. Remember that you have your ribs here. Purpose of your ribs are to protect your thoracic cavity. Okay, so again, in a 
area where you have high impact, again, maybe a patient that had some type of MBA, maybe the patient is a fighter, MMA fighter, boxer, they got a knee, got really, really hard punch to the ribs. <clears throat> that again can cause a pneumothorax. The break here can cause a puncture in the thoracic cavity. Now again, this is again a closed pneumo. We'll get to open here in just a little bit. But here, for example, if we have a break here in the ribs, this can lead to a puncture into this space here. And again, if that area gets punctured, air can go here and again cause pressure, causing that lung to collapse. So another example again is broken ribs. Some type of mechanical ventilation or manual ventilation. So for those patients that are in the ICU that are getting some type of ventilation, again, this could cause a closed pneumothorax. Again, you have the ventilation causing the lungs to expand. If the pressure is severe enough, it can cause, again, the lungs to collapse, causing a pneumothorax. Intubation. Some type of forceful intubation. If there is, again, enough, remember that you're going to go through the trachea. And if the force during the intubation is severe enough, it can cause the lungs to collapse. So these are all examples of closed pneumothorax. But we also have something like an open pneumothorax. Now an example of that would be a gunshot wound or a stab wound. So on a stab wound, you'd have a knife coming here and puncturing the thoracic cavity. That puncture would again allow air to come in. That increased air pressure again is going to cause the lung to collapse or again a, a shotgun wound, some type of piercing wound, excuse me, piercing wound. Anything that would penetrate the thoracic cavity again, you would have air coming in and causing increased pressure again, causing that lung to collapse. Now, you as a nurse, if there is some type of object here, a knife, for example, you do not remove it. You leave it in place and you let the physician take care of that. Because again, if you were to remove this, uh, there might not be a great amount of air coming in. You remove the knife or whatever object, a lot more air will enter and that will be a even more severe medical emergency. So you make sure you let whatever is there you leave it there. Three, tension pneumothorax. Now in a tension pneumothorax, you're going to have, again, as always, increased air in the thoracic cavity. So let's forget about this for now. So again, we talked about how you can have increased air, that air is going to cause pressure on the lungs, causing that lung to collapse. When a tension pneumothorax, the air pressure occurs very, very rapidly. So the amount of pressure that is exerted on this side is very, very high. Now what will end up happening is the lung may collapse extensively. Now because this pressure is so severe, which will also have happen, is remember that here, your thoracic cavity, you're also going to have your heart. Okay? You can have all your vessels your aorta, so on and so forth. Well, this pressure is going to be so severe that 
that pressure is going to cause the heart, those vessels, to be moved to the opposite side or the unaffected side. Okay, so again, this air pressure is going to cause everything to shift. So if it were to happen on this side, well, it's going to shift everything to the left. Okay, so that is very, very important because this will cause a medical emergency. This will cause a change in blood pressure and severe cyanosis. The patient will be very, very cyanotic. Again, they'll be gasping for air. They'll be air hungry because, again, that lung is completely collapsed. Not only that, but you cause a change in position in the heart and the vasculature. So you're going to have circulatory compromise at that point. Now, with these patients, something like a chest tube may be required immediately. Again, tension pneumothorax is a medical emergency. So a chest tube will be inserted chest tube will be inserted and the whole purpose again is, is for that lung to re-expand, allow that patient to breathe, to remove that pressure so that the cardiac vessels so that the heart can resume its normal position okay so with patients with tension pneumothorax you always want to watch out for dyspnea again difficulty breathing tracheal deviation decreased breath sounds decreased lung sounds again that's going to be for all the pneumothorax that we have talked about closed open tension again you're going to assess for those things but tension pneumothorax that is a medical emergency so you're going to have to be able to make sure that you can spot that if it is occurring and we'll get into a little bit of the clinical clinical manifestations here shortly so that was tension pneumothorax you may also have something like a hemothorax hemo meaning blood in this case you'd have blood in the plural space. Chylothorax. This would be lymphatic fluid in the plural space. Now this fluid um, will be milky white in color. We talked about the different types of uh, pneumothorax, but also be aware that, for example, the patient has pacemaker placement or some type of chest surgery that always um, makes it likely, or I, I should word this differently, it puts them at risk for suffering from some type of pneumothorax. Okay, so make sure that. Uh, you know that especially if they've had some type of surgery and they have some difficulty breathing that you assess for possibility of a pneumothorax. So let's focus on some clinical manifestations. Number one, tachycardia. Two, dyspnea. Now this could be in small pneumos. Okay. Three, respiratory distress. This would include shallow rapid respirations, most important, air hunger, cannot catch their breath, very, very difficult to breathe. So these patients may, may even become uh, very, very anxious. 
because think about it, you can't breathe, how would that make you feel? I mean, that's more than likely going to make you extremely anxious. So watch out for that, okay? Decreased O2 sets. Again, you, you are not having any gas exchanged in that affected lung, so of course your O2 sets will decrease. Again, you will be suffering from air hunger, giving rise to respiratory distress, chest pain. And a lot of patients tend to complain of pain in the shoulder blades or scapular region. So you're going to watch out, or when you auscultate, you will notice that there are no lung sounds present. Now again, here we talk, we're going to mention this again, tension pneumo, because again, this is a medical emergency. Now again, with patients suffering from a tension pneumothorax, we talked about how everything's going to be shifted. So again, cardiac output will be affected. We'll have decreased cardiac output, which would lead to decreased blood pressure. We'll also have hypoxemia. So for these patients, again, chest tube is crucial. Okay. Again, this will be performed by the MD, the doctor. Let's focus on some basic treatments because we're going to focus on chest tube placement, insertion, and in a very, very specific section in a different lecture. Now, if it is a small enough pneumo, the pneumo may resolve spontaneously. So for these patients, you want to make sure you ambulate, make sure that uh, they take deep breaths, make sure that they use their incentive spirometer. This is very, very important. So again, make sure that the patient stays active because in some cases, if the pneumothorax is small enough, the pneumo may resolve on its own spontaneously. Number two, if it does not, you can do something like an aspiration with a large bore needle. This is otherwise known as a thoracentesis. If it is severe enough, if the pneumo is large enough, you'll have to do a chest tube with water seal drainage. And again, this will be performed by the MD.